It's Friday night on the pod, on the bad therapy Is it pod. Friday fucking night right it's now? Friday fucking night, and Madison looks like a little worm. <laughs> I'm a little worm. For anyone not I'm a cozy watching, worm. For anyone not watching the podcast, Madison looks like a little worm tonight. Yeah, anyone listening on, you know, any of our multiple streaming platforms? <laughs> Shut the hell up. I'm a worm girl. I'm cozy. You know those She's nights? She's cozy girl. You just feel like getting fucking cozy. Like, you just want to snuggle mm-hmm. deeply into a couch with yeah. a pillow and a glass of wine and a banquet. A banky? A banquet? That's me right now. I'm just... <laughs> and you're adorable. And I love that for you. I'm tired, man. We're both tired. It's been a long week. I literally, you guys, we'll get into it, actually. Wait, can we say it at the same time? Cheers to Bad, Bad Therapy, Therapy episode, episode 18. 18. I hated that. <laughs> Cheers. I'm officially allowed to drink red wine on the couch again. Yes, as long as she... I did lose my privileges briefly. You guys maybe don't know that. <laughs> the first four podcasts, I think Madison spilled her red wine. On the floor. On the on couch. The couch. The couch is white. On the ceiling. Yeah, somehow it ended up on the ceiling. Luckily, this couch is like really easy it just to like, clean. It like rolls off. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> so we're tired. I feel like we got to stop saying that on the pod. I know. People are we like, we're say. here for energy. More energy. More passion. I think we bring the energy, but we have to preface it by saying we're fucking tired. Let me explain why I'm fucking tired okay first of all madison and i celebrated a little too hard last weekend for our fifty thousand follower we really did and you know we deserved it it was great but like but we've been regretting it all week because for some reason our bodies now give us six day hangovers and it doesn't feel like a hangover it's like that feeling when you feel like shit you think everyone hates you you hate yourself anxiety but like to the max but like you're not hungover but you just everything sucks and but you like, know just, it's because of the bender that you went on it, it doesn't feel you don't feel 100 percent. like you can't you feel kind of sick you feel yeah. kind of tired you feel just kind of can no off. longer blame it on the hangover because it's been six that days was literally a week ago but it's, you know you wouldn't be feeling like this had you slept that night yeah no yeah. but that was the problem is that we just we decided to just stay out <laughs> just continue partying we just sent it <laughs> and sometimes a send is a send and who's gonna argue with that? No regrets. No uh, regrets. Some regrets. Some regrets. <laughs> Major regrets, in fact. Yeah. But my point of this is I'm tired from that. I started a new job. We all know this at this point if you listen to the pod regularly. And it's been kicking my fucking ass. Like, I am a busy, busy girl. And podcast is busy. Podcast has been picking up. So we're trying to keep up with that. And then tomorrow I have my first live performance singing ever, which I have said no to every opportunity that's ever come my way because I'm afraid. Yeah. Because I've never done it. And I think I have like some trauma at some point in my life where I, I think I can remember specifically I tried to sing at like a birthday party when I was just embarrassed nine. yourself. And I was so nervous. You know, when your vocal cords are nervous and you have no control. <laughs> yeah. And I think I just was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was that like, was actually pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. I just remember being like, oh, I swear I could do better. It was so embarrassing. And I think I've had trauma for that. You can never sing in person again. Never. Because in my mind, I'm like, even when I feel confident that I can sing something, my in my mind, I'm going to get on stage and my vocal cords are just going to shut off. Because it's like muscle memory from what happened. You're, yeah. You're traumatizing right. early years. But it's also muscle memory from every other time I've sang ever. And then the other reason is I am going to Vietnam on Sunday for a work trip to help them film some very, very important footage for a very big, prestigious, prestigious, is that a good word to describe yeah, the company? Sure. Like they're a big deal. It's not like a new company. Like they are a big worldwide, huge, successful company. And they are sending me to like launch the new company to no, not it's not the new company. It's for the old, it's for the existing company. They are rebranding their story. They're retelling their story wow. and they need new footage and new interviews and new this and new that. And like the list literally goes on. It's like three pages long and they are sending me by myself to Vietnam with the owner of the company and a camera <laughs> and two little tiny lights and a little lapel mic to bring home all of the footage of the list that they sent me. And let me just say the list is this long. It's very long and it's very detailed, which I appreciate, but it also leaves a lot of room for like interpretation, which that's but where you my... know what. That's why they picked you though, because that creativity is in the eye of the beholder. They clearly trust what you're capable of creating. And it is, I wish I will say the one thing that makes me nervous, which they were also nervous about. And if anyone is listening, no, you're not that knows me or that works with me. They, I don't know a lot about, like it's an eyelash and nail company, eyelash extension. They own and she owns an eyelash brand. I don't know a lot about the 
details of that or the logistics, the semantics. Like, I don't know much about that. Like the in-depth. Yeah. yeah, like the names, the fans, the promades, the this, the that, the rods, the way they're made. Like, I don't know. These are all new terms for me. And they're telling, they're giving me the list of things they need me to film. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Can you show me what a rod is? But you know what? Fake it till you make it. Yeah. And that's honestly not the theme of this podcast, but one of the <laughs> themes of the podcast is psychology and, you know, just how being confident is going to make you look like the person that's fit for that job, even if maybe you're not. Absolutely. And I'm not like, you know, fake it till you make it. What is that like Rihanna quote where, where they're like, what do you do when you're not feeling the most confident? She's like, pretend. I pretend. She's so cute. Yeah. I mean, she really but nailed but it too. bars, because honestly, the last job that I got into before I got this job, I re like right before I left that job, I told them because they asked me if I knew how to work a certain editing program that I had never used in my life. Hadn't even downloaded it, never even seen it before. I didn't know anything about it. In the interview, they were like, do you know how to use Final Cut Pro? Granted, it's not like, doesn't take a rocket scientist to learn how to use it. And no, I, but they're looking for some experience for sure. And I was like, yeah, totally used it all the time. And I fucking went in there and I learned it and I did it. And I thought for sure, because of some of the hiccups that we had in the beginning, I thought for sure that they had caught on to the fact that I had never seen this site before. Like I was editing for anyone that's not an editor, this won't make sense, but I was editing like vertical videos in a horizontal format. And I didn't even know what that meant. It just was not correct. It just yeah. was wrong. And when my coworkers was like, what, the this <laughs> why is are you correct. doing it? Yeah. And so then like a year into working there, I, I finally, I think we were all having a margarita one night and I was like, you guys, can I tell you guys a secret? <laughs> Cause I had done a good job and I just felt like it was time to tell them my little devious plan that I had. Not like it was devious, but and they were like very, at first they were like, you lied. But then they were like, honestly, kind of savage. You did the damn thing. Because you did it. It would have been different if I lied and then didn't and follow sucks, through with yeah. it. But yeah, so fake it till you make it. It's like, don't fake something if like, but when I'm not saying lie, if you're not confident that you can. I'm not saying show the fuck up. I'm not yeah. saying lie, but like if you are confident that you can do it, just because you haven't done it yet doesn't mean they need to know that. You well, know what I mean? Confidence will win over experience ten out of ten times. Yeah, like there is studies that they've done where two people had a job interview, like for a very high up job. One guy had a PhD, master's degree, like two bachelors. Can you have two bachelors? I don't know. He had a, <laughs> he had a bunch of shit. Two masters. And he went into interview for this job where he was clearly so qualified and he was introverted and he was shy and he was not confident in the position or who he was as a person. And then a guy comes in who had his like associate's degree, shouldn't even have been allowed an interview based on what they're looking for ex in experience. Mm -hmm. Outgoing says he's so qualified for the job, just shows them who he is as a person confidence and, and who do you think got the job the confident person they look at all those you know accolades on paper and then they look at someone in person who can show up and lead a team speak well and articulate and carry themselves well and I think that that honestly is so important and it's like exactly like you don't have to be the most confident person in the room but make sure everyone thinks that you are and yeah. it doesn't mean be cocky there's a difference between cocky and confident yeah but arrogance is a no yeah arrogance like you're not better than anyone you're just confident in yourself and like when you believe in yourself and when you even if it's a false sense of confidence you become more confident in yourself just by gaslighting yourself into thinking that you got it or you have it or you are confident. Absolutely. It's like you trick your mind. And that's on subconscious thinking because your subconscious is like, like when you make silly jokes saying, I'm so dumb or God, I'm so I can't stupid do it, or, or I'm so I'm, yeah. ugly. Those things, although they're jokes, they stick in your mind and your subconscious mind, your brain cannot tell the difference between a joke and reality. So your mind is hearing these things and it's holding onto it subconsciously. And then you really do start to believe these terrible things that you're saying. So that's why they say to words of affirmation or and positive affirmation. So real. Yeah. Yeah. Because honestly, your brain is making thousands and thousands of choices every day every minute every hour everything you do your brain is making subconscious decisions mm -hmm. you can only realistically make so many conscious decisions before your brain is completely overwhelmed Combust. and you're anxious and you're shut down yeah. yeah but subconsciously it never stops yeah and so if you're not feeding your brain subconscious like healthy good mm -hmm. positive habits subconsciously your brain's going to start turning out bad negative shit 100 percent. speaking back to this trip that i'm going on I will just, I, I've never been more stressed out about anything in my life. The only thing that I've allowed myself to speak or think is you've got this. It's going to be fine. You're going to figure it out. You know what you're doing. Like everything that I don't feel deep down 
that just I keep saying, but it. the more I say it, the more I honestly feel it because I feel like a lot of the time doubt and negative self-talk isn't real. It's just us projecting like our negative insecurity thoughts. And yeah, anxiety. Insecurity. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's real just because I feel scared. Doesn't mean that I should be scared. Absolutely. Because it's in your, in your brain, like, our, as human beings, our first thing is going to be like self-doubt and wondering what could go wrong because we're always trying to plan, you know, to make things right. Yeah. But if you're being negative, if you're putting negative shit out there, that's your brain's going to start to think that that's reality. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's, that is that on manifestation yeah. because people uh -huh. love to talk shit about manifestation and how it's just like an easy way out or you know, it's not real. It's we lazy people. We manifest every day without even knowing. I mean, every thought that you have, every word that you speak is it's a manifestation. It's putting an energy into the universe and energy is what creates everything around you. Like your energy field around you, what you put out is what creates that. And energy attracts other energy. Like it all will tie in together. I recently saw a quote that said, the way you brush your teeth is the way that you live your life. And when I first saw that, I was like, that sounds a little bit dramatic. But then I listened to the psychology of it. And if you wake up in the morning in a frenzy and you run into the bathroom and brush your teeth in a rush and don't pay any attention to what you're actually doing and you're so focused on other things, you're just brushing your teeth, trying to get through it. That's how the rest of your day is going to be. That's how your life's going to be. But if you wake up with intention and say, I'm going to have a good day, I'm going to be centered, I'm going to be focused, and you go into the bathroom and you put your toothpaste on your toothbrush and you brush your teeth with like a meaning, like you're trying to do something. You're trying to get something done. You're brushing your teeth. That's all you're focusing on. That's mm -hmm. all you're thinking about. Like you're in the moment. You're present. slow, you're calm, you're present. That's how you're going to live your life. So something similar, which is not necessarily talking about how you're going to live your life, but like they say that things that you hate, like for example, washing the dishes. If you hate washing the dishes, you really have to immerse yourself into the experience like get the warm water on your hands like soap yourself up like soap like take your time and it actually can be a really enjoyable experience but most of the time when we go to wash dishes we're like god i don't want to wash these dishes like ew like you this build it up so much but in if, your head but yeah. if you go into it like turn the warm water on you're because some it's true like turn if you, some music on yeah like yeah. you just take your time you're not rushing you're just cleaning you're in the warm water you're just like clear your head you're not thinking about anything else you're not thinking god i wish i wasn't doing this you're just just being present and not rushing through it and it can be an enjoyable experience and I actually if anyone I hate doing dishes but when I do and it's hard because that's the last thing I want to do so it's hard to justify spending enough like time thinking about and enjoying something like that whereas right. I just want to get it done as quickly as I can because I hate it but when I don't do that it's not that bad but that's kind of one of those things about like procrastination and avoiding things in life that we don't want to do and only doing the things we do want to do is like all of these things are a part of our life you can make them as shitty or as positive as you want and the more time that you spend like in the present moment yeah because as, as human beings especially busy you know motivated human beings we're always thinking about a hundred other things and what could go wrong and what could go right. And just think about doing the fucking dishes and just do the dishes. Yeah. Don't, don't One put thing it off. At a time. Don't make it so big in your head. Cause that's something I do is if there's something I don't want to do, something I'm really procrastinating, I put it off and put it off and I make it such a huge thing in my I head. I do that too. That by the time I get to it, it I mean, it's just existential dread. <laughs> yeah. And then you do it and you're and like, okay, like, that, that was took me 10 minutes. Really not that fucking yeah. bad. But it becomes such a big thing because you let it. Yeah. Whereas if you had a different mindset, if you were able to just shift your mindset and say, this is just a part of life. It's not going anywhere. It's always going to be there. How can I make it more positive? How can I make it more enjoyable? And that's a really good reminder because I think that's really hard to do because it's easy to get lost in the thoughts in your mind and like what's what's going on in your internal world. But if you can just kind of make it a habit to remind yourself like, hey, this is, I've, I've made it a habit to be like, hey, you're being really negative right now. And something that actually kind of forced me into that, which is funny, was angel numbers. I started researching angel numbers and 111 stood for, I think it was like, your thoughts are manifesting. So be careful what you're thinking about. So every time I would see 111, I would think like, oh, am I thinking about something negative? What was I just thinking Cause about? Because let me yeah. shift my mindset. And not that alone, but that was something that made me like consciously aware of what I was thinking. And then as time has gone on, obviously I really, really believe that our thoughts manifest our reality. I mean, our thoughts are our reality. What you think in your head, Absolutely. whether it's real or not, what you think and the way you perceive life is 
your reality because it's what you create for yourself. You can perceive a situation negatively and it's negative, or you can see a, it a different way and it's positive. Yeah. But it's like you choose, you can pick one. It's easier said than done, but if you're aware consciously of these things, you can make these changes and make it happen and it will change your life. Well, and that's kind of what happens to people is I think they just get so wrapped up in the rat race that they, and of course you feel negative, you feel overwhelmed, you feel like you don't have time for yourself, you don't have time for anything, that you're not even actually living your life because you're so focused on, you know, what you would rather be doing instead. And that this is actually something I saw, I was reading the other day, I was reading a, a psychology book about a woman who went to her friend's house and her friend lived in a big, beautiful house. They had a lot of money. The wife didn't work. She had a huge diamond ring on her finger. Her and her husband seemed to be pretty happy. They have beautiful, healthy children. And she goes home. And the first thing she says to her husband, they have an average house, you know, mediocre it's fine. They, they own a home. I want to remodel this house. I hate this house. I want to gut it floor to ceiling. And he looked at her and he said, I really appreciate you for being so content with what we have and not being unhappy with our current circumstances. And he kind of said that like as a rebuttal to her. Like, sorry, like, no, like he was saying, one of the things I've appreciated about you. But she said she just wanted to gut the whole house. First time she's ever done anything like that, apparently. Oh, so he was saying, I appreciate in yeah. the past not yeah. wanting. So, so okay. basically what he was saying is like, what I, I really appreciate about our relationship is that you is that you are super content with what you have. Not even just what we have, not what I've given you, but just what you have. You're not one of those people that's always looking for more. The grass mm -hmm. is greener. So just remember that if you gutted this house and we spent $100,000 doing it, would that make you more content than you are now? And then of course she has this whole like, of course not. Yeah. I have a beautiful home, a beautiful husband beautiful children. My life is amazing. Mm -hmm. Just because her house is bigger and cleaner and prettier does not mean that they're happier. Yeah. And that's something with like our culture specifically. I feel like there's a lot of people that are always looking for more, always looking for bigger, better, more money, more expensive, because that's kind of what we're, it's a very consumerism driven society. Yeah. Well, it's very much like nowadays too, with social media, it's very much, what does it look like I have? Yeah, exactly. You know, like a lot of the people that you see with big cars and fancy houses, they're renting the car, they're leasing the car. It's not theirs. They don't own it. People the bags living above they're their renting. Means. Yeah. yeah, living above their means. Don't have dollar to their name, but have all because they spend it all on shit that is not important. Like that is what is so pushed in the media with honestly, like young are the younger generations. Yeah, because absolutely. They they grew up seeing all these influencers like when the influencer era started taking off and people were making like a ridiculous amount of money and then they have these 12 13 year olds growing up watching that then tiktok comes out and then they start making crazy money on tiktok and then it all just becomes it's just for show yeah and it does not make it's happiness not real. it doesn't have there's no like stability there there's no love there's no friendship there's no community like it is a empty lonely world yeah well and i know we briefly touched on this last week but that's you know, if you're always looking for something better, if you're always looking for something more, you're never going to be happy. Right. There's never going to be anything in the world that's enough. And not to mention having gratitude for what you do have will bring more things to be grateful for. Having an attitude of like, even if you live in a fucking box and you have a sh one shoelace to your name, being grateful that you have that box and good things will come to you. Like I firmly truly believe that because not like I've ever been that down bad, but at times when it's hard to find something to be grateful for, like I'm grateful for my body. I'm grateful for the fact that I have hair on my head. Yeah. Like your mind, your soul. I'm grateful for my best friend. I'm grateful for the fact that I have a pair of shoes to wear. Like literally even at, no matter what it is, it could be the smallest thing. It really does just like make you feel better, which changes the energy inside you, which changes what you're putting out, transmitting and what comes and finds you. Well, yeah. Switching to a, like a gratitude mindset, it's the best thing you can do for your life. Mm -hmm. And again, easier said than done mm -hmm. sometimes. Cause like, but it's a good reminder because yeah, like obviously we all know these things, but sometimes it's like you hear you it forget. and you forget. Honestly, because this is you, good for me right now. Yeah. Like, you, this is so good 100%. for me to hear. Guys, I, anyone listening, like the things we talk about, sometimes it sounds like we're preaching these things, like we know it all, but these are, if anything, we're just talking to each other. We live this shit, man. Yeah. We live this shit every day. We live this shit sometimes too. Sometimes we just check each other like. And sometimes this is a reminder for us. Yeah. Like we need to do these things and this is what's important because like, like I said, we all know 
these things for the most part, but it's a good reminder. And it's like, I've had a very negative, like a week where I've been very negative. I've been very unappreciative. I've been very just unhappy in, in my career, in my just where I'm at. And I'm always thinking like, all I've been thinking all week is like, what do I need to do instead? And like, this is such a good reminder, honestly, sitting here right now and anyone who's listening that if you're super unhappy with where you're at, of course you should make changes, but also like, just be grateful. Just take a second to yeah. be like, grateful for what stop where you and are. Smell the roses. Something that always like stuck with me was like, think about you five years ago. Think about 12 years ago. Think about you when you were 10. Would that girl be proud? Like 10 year old me would be fucking stoked. Thrilled. So excited. And, and that's crazy because like me sitting here, I feel like there's still so much that I need to do and so much that I strive for that I haven't accomplished. But like 10 year old me, Everything that she was interested in, I'm doing. And I've done it successfully. Would be shocked. Would yeah. be thrilled. Yeah, absolutely. She would be happy that we made it through the thick of it. Maybe, you know, the thick of it from what she was going through. We made it through whatever she was going through. We made it through the family trauma. We made it through the whatever. We found love. We have friendships that mean something to us. We mm-hmm. found our place in life. We are have a career. We are doing a pot like she would be thrilled. Well, and that's the thing about life is like, you don't ever get to a certain point and like you made it Mm -hmm. like, congrats. There's no more pain or suffering. You're happy. And it's right. You're good to go. Continuous. No, it's nonstop for the rest of your life. An uphill battle. Yeah. Which (laughs) sounds like a lot. It's always, well, that actually used to be something that was very triggering to me because I was like, I didn't ask to be put on this planet and struggle for for the next hundred years. Always know that the next trauma is like, around the corner yeah like oh i'm happy today but what's coming tomorrow but it's like honestly most of the time things are so good and so happy and i think the more you go through honestly like the more you go through the more you overcome Mm -hmm. the more you know that no matter what you're going through the fucking sun will rise again absolutely and you're gonna get through it because you don't have a choice my favorite quote ever that i heard was the sun rises after the darkest part of the night and i know it's so cheesy but it is so fucking true because it does the darkest part of the night what 4 a.m and then it starts to the sun slowly comes rise. back that phrase is so literal because it's like literally the sun rises right after the darkest part of the night but that's what i love about it because literally it's so true if you're feeling like you're at your darkest point the sun rises right after the darkest point of the night. Like just hold on. The sun will rise again. That's the thing about trauma and overcoming things and, you know, realizing that life is not always going to be easy, but it always goes on. Is like you kind of start to surround yourself with people. Like you said, as the more you overcome things, like the better you become. Mm -hmm. You kind of start to surround yourself with people who have also been through shit. Like, I don't know if you've ever been around someone who's never been through anything oh my god i literally cannot terrible be friends it's with terrible people who haven't like they are so they don't have any grasp of like the actual world or what things they're actually so feel shallow like. like they have no idea what like a human experience really is and that just goes to show like how much trauma sucks but how important it is yeah because it makes you strong it makes you resilient it makes it makes this life real yeah i just don't understand how and like, it makes you appreciate everything all of the good things like without the bad you can't appreciate the good that's where the gratitude comes into yeah. play right because like if you've never gone through anything terrible it's really hard to be grateful for the good things. for the small things yeah too. or just like the health of your father mm-hmm. like the fact that your car has gas in it yeah the fact that you have a roof over your head like, yeah that shit doesn't matter because you've never experienced anything anything terrible. different yeah and i don't really know how it's possible because it's kind of a traumatizing world we live in Mm -hmm. how people could not be traumatized but there are people there are people they grew up in a bubble and that's great for them but honestly like character development dude like i think the people that are put on this earth to go through that shit are put here for a purpose to help other people and to like be a voice and to like help change i think that certain people are put here just like npc vibes and then certain people are put on this earth with the mission to be traumatized because they're meant to do something great and i think greatness comes from pain and suffering because without that you really could never find your true potential because you're not it's like forced out of you when you're suffering and when you're in pain absolutely when i did like a year of therapy and you know life coaching that was the core focus is what is your core wound Mm -hmm. and who does it make you right so like we got to the depth of what my core wound was, which is something that was so terrible and something I just, I thought made my life worse. I thought Mm -hmm. made me worse. But the truth of it was it brought all all of these things in me that I'm now able to give as a gift to the world, Mm -hmm. which like you said, character development, you don't create those gifts. You can't just learn that by reading a book. You know, self-help books are great, but experience is the best thing ever. And that goes back to the very beginning of this is like, fake it till you make it. Like you're going to, 
learn how to do things by doing them. So if you haven't done it yet, but you think you can do it or you're confident that you can do it, just fucking say yes to it because you're going to learn by doing hands-on things, or at least that's how I learned, but it's like experience. I mean, everyone's different too, though, you know, like nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I kind of wonder, there's some people who are born into certain situations and some people who you look at and you'd think, well, they have everything. Their nurture is clearly not that bad. Why are they? Is it their nature that they turn out? Like you look at serial killers or just people who aren't really contributing members of the society. What is it that went so wrong that caused them to be such bad people? I mean, you hear about people that do terrible, terrible fucking things. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, well, I know there's been a couple studies done where identical twins have been separated at birth and lived completely different lives. There's actually a movie. I haven't watched it, but three twins identical twins were all separated and given to different families of different economical standings. Like one was poor, one was middle class, one was very rich. Oh my gosh, rich. for real? That's terrible. Yeah, I know. I really want to watch the movie. It's like a documentary. Um, I haven't seen it yet. But anyways, that was just a side note. There was a serial killer that I was super interested in for a really long time. And he went through a lot of trauma, but he was like a good kid at heart. So that's an experience where it's like nurture, nurture because he was kind of traumatized, but then he just turned evil like he did the most evil things and it's like how could you be good by nature like i guess you kind of wonder if it's a little bit of both right it is well it's for sure a little bit of both this is like a question that's been plaguing psychologists asked for centuries for right? centuries because you can't really answer it because it, it is both at the end of the day but this is something that they ask about when it comes to everything whether that's depression or financial status homosexuality Anything that they can put on, whether it's nature versus nurture. Were you born this way or were you raised this way? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how the fuck are we supposed to know? Because you look at siblings, I mean, not even twins, just born in the same house. Raised in the same house, same DNA, kind of. Same, you know, age range. Nothing crazy different has happened in their lives. And you have two completely different ends of the spectrum for as far as behaviors and goals and mental health yeah mental health everything so like that's gotta be nature nature right but then I think I think to myself I'm like nurture like it's just such a mind fuck honestly Mm -hmm. because I feel like for me as a kid I was not to say like I was traumatized by my parents but like they went through divorce and that was really hard for me I was an only child was bullied at school things like of that nature but as a human who I was when I was going through those things was very shy and very soft, very sensitive, very yes ma'am type of like person. That's who I was to my core, very soft and sweet. Like that's just the way you were born. That's the way I was born. But then through my experiences, I became like rougher around the edges and I started acting out and I started being like someone that was very much created that by was nurture. That definitely your experiences. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. For sure. And obviously I found my way back to myself, but there's still a little grit in me because of those experiences that I don't think I would have had otherwise. And you know what I think, and this is like off a couple of things that I've been reading and just some stuff that I've been, because I've been interested in this for a while. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote like an essay about this in college. I mean, it's very interesting. I researched it, yeah. Like you are who you are to your core. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really change. Mm -hmm. Like who you really... That's more just like fate. Really are. Yeah. Exactly. But can you sculpt different characteristics to make yourself more one way or another? Mm -hmm. Can you change habits to make yourself less or more of something? Absolutely. Yeah. Can your nurture change the way that you view the world so that maybe, maybe you become more violent or maybe you become more introverted? Absolutely. So you still are who you are. But then paired with who you are to your core. It is whether it's going to be accentuated. Yeah. So like that's how you get a serial killer, right? Yeah. Someone who maybe had like some psychosis or some mental illness just that they were born with some chemical imbalances and then were put in situations where those were accentuated. Yes. Yep. I think you just answered the fucking question. Well, call me a fucking scientist. (laughs) (laughs) I think you just answered the question. So transitioning into a different topic kind of still aligned with the psychological aspects of the human brain is more geared towards relationships and just the way the human brain works. If you're in a relationship or a situationship and you want your power back or you want to get the upper hand and hold the upper hand, you need to understand a few things about psychology behind the human brain. Reward destroys enjoyment. So in other words, if you are always available to someone, if you're always texting them, if you get mad at them and you send them a paragraph or you're blowing them up, up, that is attention. And attention, bad attention, good attention, still attention, aka reward. So to them, they're getting the satisfaction of you being mad. They're getting the satisfaction of you texting them, double texting them, even if they think it's annoying or they don't like it or whatever the case may be, that is still a 
quote unquote reward. And because you're doing this so much, when you actually do talk to them, it takes away the aspect of enjoyment. Unfortunately, this is just something that happens psychologically. So if you're dealing with this in a situationship or relationship, the best thing you can do is to just give space, remove yourself, don't send that text, don't blow that person up. Even if you might want to, I don't know, go scream into a pillow or something. It's obviously healthy to tell someone how you're feeling and send them that message on how you're feeling. But in terms of psychology and the psychology behind the brain and how the mind works, doing that takes away the enjoyment of talking to you. Not because you're being needy, not because you're being annoying, but it takes away the mystery. It takes away the space between you guys, which allows people to miss you. And like, I get that because I feel like this is specifically for a circumstance of a situationship. Yeah. Because if you're looking looking let's be real if you're looking for the upper hand or the power back clearly you're not in like a healthy normal relationship it's it's maybe very early on or it's a situationship or you're not sure how he feels about you and so obviously especially as a woman it's your natural reaction to like reach out and reach out and reach out and try and get that you know you're you're giving and you're giving and or you're just giving. as someone that cares yeah exactly so that's not something that you would if you know in a normal relationship obviously you wouldn't have yourself. to do that yeah but i'm just speaking in terms of psychology and yeah. like if you lost the upper hand and you feel like fuck what have i done how do i get this back like you need to stop rewarding them for their bad behavior and reward looks like blowing them up when you're mad at them because any type of attention good or bad is still attention and is still rewarding their behavior and if you just took that away the enjoyment when they did hear from you would go up tenfold absolutely and that's like that's that on the no contact theory like if you are unsure about how someone feels about you or how you feel about them instead of blowing them up just fucking stop talking to them yeah because going no contact you're gonna really find out how someone feels about you exactly because your absence they'll either miss you or they won't give a shit or they'll move on and you will too exactly like best case scenario no contact honestly and i know a lot of people don't want to hear this is like you both move on yeah they're out of sight, out of mind. You take time to heal and that's that on that. You move on, you meet someone else. That's that on that. And that's how it was meant to be anyway. But the yep. secondary option, which sometimes, not all the time, so don't get your hopes up if this is what your goal is. Your goal should never be in hopes that they miss you and they reach back out and that you rekindle things. Because you're just going to get disappointed. Because there's a reason it ended. But mm-hmm. in some cases, because not everything is the same, that will happen and it's not a bad thing. And sometimes you both need space and time apart to miss each other. And that is what no contact brings. It brings clarity because it's really hard to find clarity when you're constantly talking to someone or around someone or in intertwined with someone's energy yeah i mean when it's this close to your face it's impossible to see it for what it really is so taking a step back is healthy on both ends one for if someone doesn't appreciate you or doesn't see your worth sometimes you have to leave for them to see that and let me just say if it takes you leaving for someone to see your worth probably don't go back probably just keep walking away however let them see your worth leave and let them see your worth but then keep walking when they come back Well, and I'm a firm believer in no contact because when you're super emotional, you're not in a state where you can communicate with someone in a realistic way. Your emotions will take over that conversation every single time. Yeah, there's no logic behind what you're saying. And the difference between men and women is men are a lot better at speaking with logic Mm -hmm. and putting their emotions to the side and speaking from how they actually feel and what they're able to actually... And like what's making sense. Right. It's, it, and it, it, it comes full circle with them. Because can... women were so emotional. Like we could know that something's really toxic and something's really bad or something's not working. But because we're so emotionally tied to this, we don't want to look at it from that perspective. We want to look at it from how it's making us feel in that moment. Whereas men are able to be like, this is not working. Right. And, and here's this like is the long why. term and this is where we're... What's going to happen. Right. But... And- Women are like, but I don't see it that way because that's not how I feel. So taking that space helps you as a woman or, you know, not just women, someone that's just more emotional, aware of their emotions and less logical, like not like you're not logical, but more emotionally driven. It's hard to be logical when you have very strong emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to take yourself out of that space, because if you're very emotional and you're making emotional decisions, you're going to have regret. You're going to feel guilty about the things you said or the things that you did when you were so emotionally driven. Mm-hmm. And then you look crazy and it's hard to explain to someone that like wasn't in I that I was just heightened. emotional, yeah. But there's also something to be said about people being too logical when emotions could like, probably- we, can, we could be a little emotional. You could yeah. add a little emotion to it. Like, do you not feel, are you a robot? Because I get what you're saying, but it's not that black and white. Maybe in your head, but is that really like the most, like it's funny, logical explanation? 
considering how we both feel, you know, I don't know. Well, and like, I think that's kind of the difference between men and women is like men fall in love through sexual or physical intimacy logic thinking like long-term type things and women fall in love through passion and emotion and just like the constant presence of someone like we're mental intimacy we're very different with how we fall in love yeah and i think that's kind of why it's hard sometimes for people to stay in love you look at people in like long relationships and it's like you're just not always on the same page about where your love started i mean men and women have fundamental differences i mean major undeniable like we can argue feminism like this this and that whatever but when it comes to how we're wired fundamentally we are different yeah absolutely. men are logical they are from point a to point b whereas women we are circular let's go like take the scenic route like that's actually something within the science spirit realm where energy is transmuted into two different forms and there's feminine energy and there's masculine energy and that's not just like bullshit Shit. Like that's a real thing, but masculine energy is very, for example, if you're driving to work, you're going to go straight to like the stop sign logistics. turn. It's literally but logistics, if you're yeah. going the feminine route, you're going to take the scenic route and you're going to go the long way. You're going to take, look, drive go by around the, the water about and, four times. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was talking to my therapist about this because I was having a hard time understanding my partner, how we was so logical when we'd have conversations, we were communicate. It was just so like, I'm like, where's the emotion? Where's, why are we not fighting? Why is there not something? And she drew me a picture. She held up two pictures. She was so cute. The woman and the man's brain. And the woman's brain is literally looks like an explosion. <laughs> no, like a firework went off. <laughs> She's like, so this is your brain. I was like, yeah, that looks about accurate. Mm -hmm. And then she holds up another picture and it's his brain. It's like five dots <laughs> and they're not moving and they're all flowing in unison. It's a perfect circle. And she's like, you need to understand that your brains are firing on different cylinders. You're never going to understand each other on the level of how you think and how you feel, how you perceive, how you communicate. But that doesn't mean that you can't come to understanding. You know, an understanding and a meeting point. Yeah. You don't have to be him. He doesn't have to be you. You just have to respect each other and but, love each other. But that's the thing is the want and desire and like energy that is put into trying to understand each other instead of just not understanding each other and just being like throwing in the towel. Well, it or, doesn't matter then. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you like knowing that you're different than someone and not being exactly wired the same like you were just saying you can still make it work if you both want to it just takes communication understanding patience and honestly love and care and, and respect. respect yep well and that's the thing is like you don't have to change yourself for your partner but if your partner cares enough or respects you enough or is patient enough like all the things i just listed then it shouldn't be that hard for them to look at life through your lens as you should do for them as well. Like look at it. Cause if, cause sometimes I think what happens in relationships, which causes a relationship to end is there's only one person that's willing to look through the other person's lens. Or that's lens. willing to make any, you yeah, know. To be able to say, okay, this is how I feel, but I understand where you're coming from. Let me kind of cater to what you want to help you. But then what about the reverse? What about the other person? Has and how can we, a meeting of the minds. And Absolutely. how can we compromise so that it's fair for both of us because we love each other and we want to make it work. And like bottom line, when you love someone and you want to be with them, nothing should be able to come between you guys unless it's like infidelity or, or something no, crazy. No, you but, choose to make it work. But you, it's yeah. a decision. It's a choice. You know, you talk to people that have been married for fucking 50, 50 years. 60 yeah. years and they say, what's the secret? And it's like communication, understanding, patience. Respect. And my wife is always right. Yeah, the woman is always right. <laughs> but no, but but seriously, it's like being married and loving someone. It's a choice. Absolutely. Because at some point, some days you're not going to love them. And some, some days you're going to fucking hate them. But you choose to love that person and you choose to make decisions to cater to that love and to make it work. And that's why relationships last. Well, and I saw a quote that said, your marriage does not start when you say your vows, when you're on your honeymoon, when you're living your best life. Your marriage starts when you look over at that person and you cannot fucking stand them. <laughs> You don't want to be in the same room as them. They sneeze and you want to slap them. Like you genuinely are at the end of your rope. You do not want to continue in the relationship. That is when your marriage starts because that's when you make the decision that you're either going to continue to try, you're going to continue to communicate, you're going to continue to be the partner that you promised you would be when you don't fucking want to, not mm -hmm. when you do, because it's really easy to be the partner you want to be when you want to be it. But when things are not perfect and 
humans change and you're frustrated if you just walk away i mean that was never a marriage that's mm -hmm. not what it is because that's marriage that shouldn't be an option right? i i mean i agree i don't understand why people just get married and get divorced and get married and get divorced but like, i think people just get married willy-nilly nowadays because they want to say that they're married and it's a standard for society like yeah well we better just get engaged and get married and it's like you know i was never i've never seen a relationship work ever in my life me neither so it's, it's really rare to see marriages work out these and days yeah and I mean, I've seen other people's. I'm just speaking in terms of like, but yeah, I know what you mean too. No, I mean, like, I think the div divorce rate is significantly higher than it's ever been. You know, people used to not get divorced. Well, now it's like the options are crazy because we think we have infinite options because of social media. You can always go online and see someone hotter than your person and someone smarter than your person. There's always something better, yep. seemingly visually better. So it's easy to think that there's more options. And so that's when, when really there's not. When you get to the end of your rope, you walk away yeah. instead of turning around and thinking that you'll find it better somewhere else. And honestly, I can speak to this so heavily because when I was, and I've talked about this relationship, I swear to God, I wonder if this man has ever heard my podcast, how many times I've brought up our relationship. It's the only real relationship I've ever really had. Right. But when I left, he was so good to me in so many ways and like built me up so much that I thought I walked on water and I mm -hmm. thought I was going to walk out into the world and I was going to find someone so quickly and that it was going to be all rainbows and butterflies. And it's been probably like almost a decade that's crazy and i have not found anyone like yeah. it is fucking rough it's, out there it is rare to find somebody who not only loves you but loves themselves mm -hmm. loves them, their family is respectful is kind mm -hmm. like to find someone these days who you are in, just like on the same wavelength with. yeah just have the same values as it's really difficult because there's someone a, that just like understands you and when, there's like someone that you don't have to explain yourself to yep someone that exactly. just gets you it's super rare and that's why it's so hard when you see you know all these instagram couples and all these people on but those are all fake the bachelorette and like it's yeah. just so corny and it just yeah. it paints such an unrealistic expectation um of who you have to be for your partner. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, if you want to be in a long, happy marriage, you have to be willing to look in the mirror and say what you did wrong mm -hmm. and how you're going to show up better for your partner. Accountability. Even if they fucked up too. Can we just talk about accountability for a yeah. second? Because accountability was something that I struggled with for a long time. Because I, even if I knew deep down that it was me, I had such a pride issue where I didn't want to apologize. I could always find the fault in someone else. I could always say, well, I did this because you did that. And I felt this, but you made me feel like this. And that's why I did that. Instead of being able to like look at it like retrospectively and say, or introspectively and say like, I could have handled myself better. Yeah. And like, I did this. Period. And I did this. Yeah. Like instead of making it about anyone else, somebody else's And fault. sometimes like, but what my point is like, sometimes there are other people involved and sometimes there are other people's emotions and reasons why you felt or did or reacted the way you did, but you still have to take accountability for your actions. Because if you can't do that, you're never going to grow. You're never going to cultivate happy, healthy relationships. You're always going to be blaming someone else for your problems and you're never going to be happy. You're never going to feel fulfilled. There's and, never going to be know, enough. It's so yeah. funny. I saw Nicki Minaj on stage the other day and she was performing and she's like, for so long, I was looking for the problem because there's so many problems. And finally, one day I woke up and realized the problem was me. Holy shit, Nikki. Bars. But bars, right? Because it's true. And like, it's really a hard, it's super hard to look yourself in the mirror and be like, you are the problem. But once you do that, your life will just become so much so better much because better. you're able to truly analyze yourself in such a way that is so helpful to your growth. And I feel like the second that I was able to fully dive into that, I have had the best relationships like with my friends, my family. It makes it a lot easier to be real. Yeah, like I can I can fully take accountability for what I do and how and I- your responsibility. Doesn't mean yeah. I'm perfect. Doesn't mean I always make the best decisions or react the right way, but I can always look at it and say you fucked up here and here's how you can do better next time and it's like I learn from my mistakes instead of just pretending instead it of didn't just happen. pretending that it was someone else's fault well and that's kind of the thing about like rounding yourself out for your partners like a lot of people I'm not going to change for somebody I am who I am nobody's asking you to change right your, your core is who you are right but that's why we're in love with you exactly but if you look at your partner and you're doing something or saying something or being something that's hurting them or causing problems you have to be able to be 
emotionally mature enough to take accountability for the fact that you can change your habits yeah. and change the things that you do without changing who you are to your core. Yeah. Because you flipping out on someone and yelling and screaming and saying mean things is not who you are to your core. Right. And it's, if that's who you just, want to be to your core, then you need to get help. But that's not who you are. That's just how you react. It's all to something. habitual. And you can make the choice to not do that. Well, that's exactly it. If you look at your partner and you say, hey, I would really appreciate if you didn't talk to me the way you talk to your friends the way you talk to your mother, whatever. And you say, well, I'm not going to change who I am. No, it's, it's a habit. Everything, all these little tiny things we do, you know, on the, on the outside, not our values, not our morals, mm -hmm. but these little habits, those things are so changeable, Yeah, but it just doesn't feel like it because you're so rooted in it. But and it also doesn't make you like, it doesn't make your feelings less valid in situations to take accountability for what you've done wrong right. in those situations. Like if anything, I have more respect for that because that's harder to do. And you'll find more healing if you go that direction than trying to fight it at every corner. Like and saying that everybody else is wrong and you are who you are. Because mm -hmm. that's like someone saying, honey, I'd really appreciate if you'd start putting your socks in the hamper. Yeah. And you're like, fuck you. That's who I am. I've always thrown my socks yeah. in the toilet. That's who I am as a person. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. And like that's, the, it's the same yeah. thing. It's reactions. It's habits. And I bring this up from personal experience because like this used to be me. And it used to be all of us. It still is. And honestly, like I would say yeah. Madison was the one that taught me how to be different because there were so many times like Madison and I, fun fact about us, we've never been in like a real fight ever. Not a, no, not, not a relevant That's lasted one. longer than 30 seconds. Yeah, no, before like, we both Like literally. Laughing. Yeah. And I know that sounds crazy, but there have been times where fully if Madison were anything like me when we were fighting, it would have blown up. Yeah, we wouldn't have talked probably but because madison always like here's how it would go down like i would get mad or she would get mad or something would happen and then i would be mad but i want to say i did something and i would want to apologize but i was so stubborn and prideful that i wouldn't mm -hmm. and then you would look at me and you would say i'm sorry and you would apologize to me and then immediately like my wall would drop and i'd Just be like, like i'm sorry yeah gone but like i would have never initiated that and so i think having that from a friend even when I knew I was in the wrong like having her come to me it kind of like made me feel like I don't have to act like that like I don't have to be hard like, I don't have I, to be hard I don't have to be tough I can apologize when I'm wrong it doesn't make it's not embarrassing it's not apologizing is cathartic it's not weak yeah and now I'm really quick to apologize for things but that was the first like introduction to having like a real relationship like that where she cared more about loving me and being a part of my life than arguing with than me any, about something than stupid any bullshit argument or any prideful interaction that we had yeah like, don't get me wrong we've, we've been irritated we've been in bickering arguments but nothing that's ever been enough to the point where i, I i'm not going to apologize she's not going to apologize yeah so we're just not going to no. talk but it started with you because there was a phase of my life and this was a long time ago okay no one think i'm like, like i mean crazy. we're talking 12 13 years ago everyone yeah. so just relax <laughs> no not that long ago i'm thinking like san diego we're talking like five or six years ago okay all right we're talking like five or six years ago when you know, I didn't even know who, who was Allie at that point in life. Like I didn't know, but I, I do know that I knew Madison was someone really special because of how she handled conflict with me because I knew that I could escalate a situation, but she never like let it escalate. She always diffused it She's really not quickly. not necessary. Yeah. And yeah. And then I quickly learned like she was, it, it almost like, how do I say this? It like built a safe place for me inside of her because I knew that I didn't have to defend myself or, or be this tough, like, cause you knew I was just going to be there. Cause like, I knew that you were there good. no matter what. And then I kind of like that kind of just layered into the other areas of my life and you know, obviously there was a lot more down the road that changed that, but that was definitely my first introduction to taking accountability was that because makes me of you. want to cry. Like, really? Yeah, of course. Like the fact that I had such an impact on you and oh, 100%. and how you have, have relationships. Like I could literally go on and on and I'm not even saying this to be like cheesy or gross. Like the, the impact you've had on me in so many different ways is like in fucking incredible. That's and, just one example. And 100%, I feel the same about you because like, look at where we are. <laughs> look at what we're doing. I'm glad you feel that way about me too. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a decade of yeah i mean you guys have Trial no idea like, no <laughs> fucking idea actually yeah the fact that we're sitting on this couch and we're both you know in our mid-20s and, and we're adults and we're maturing and we're becoming who we never thought that we would be mm -hmm. and still 
you know, going out for 50K and like probably doing the most and <laughs> doing probably doing a little much. bit too much. We're but still on our way. We just show up for each other yeah. like 100% of the time. And I think like sometimes I'll hear people talk about their friendships and silly fights that they're in with their friends and I will literally be drunk or something, hear them at a bar and be like, that's not your friend. Couldn't be me. Yeah. No, I'm like, and I'm, and then I get home and I'm like the next day I'm like, Ali, that is so rude, but it's so true because that is not your friend. I actually saw that. I saw something that said, if you are in a really bad fight or like a fight that you can't get over with your best friend, that is not, that's your, best not your best friend no because that's like your sister like i wouldn't be in a fight with my sister that i wouldn't get over yeah like if, if you're family with somebody which is what you are to me mm-hmm. you fucking care enough to figure it out yeah it's just the way it is yeah There's yeah you don't want to let things fester and like honestly the small shit isn't gonna bother your best friend that much or no, shouldn't it's not that big they of should a deal. always be in your corner you might get on each other's nerves you it's might... like even if you're in the wrong like they'll tell you you're in the wrong but they're not gonna like drag you for drag it drag you forward or make you feel like shit like no. they will help guide you to a better place no and that's like that's real friendship yeah and that's how you know like the only things in life that really matter are the people who make you feel like that. Yeah, like genuine real connections and people that make you feel good. And it's so hard sometimes because we want to hold on to connections and relationships that don't because we seek it. We seek someone that makes us feel good. And it's scary to let go of it because you don't know if something's going to come find you, but it will. It's rare, man. And I appreciate it. It is rare, but you know, the more you hold on to what's not meant for you, the less that what's meant for you will come. Absolutely. And that's that on Bad Therapy episode 18. I was just going to cheers you. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in, psychology, and who knows whatever the fuck else we talked about. (laughs) We kind of had like topics and... That was a fun little worm. You were a little worm in the corner and I loved it. Guys, I'll be in Vietnam next week, so Madison's going to take over the posting for me. Sorry if it's trash for seven days. It better not be. I better come back to a million subs. Millions and millions of views. (laughs) Can you imagine? I just blow us the fuck up. Mm -hmm, Uh, You already did that, but... We both did. Bad Therapy. See you next week. See you next Thursday. Bye.